I wanted to talk to you today about one of the biggest things I learned in our last Golf Lab Certify World Tour. We certify coaches from more than 15 countries on how to coach with ground reaction forces. And what I learned from that is that the coaches themselves are doing a really good job understanding the terms of what's happening down here at the ground. But that doesn't mean that our students do. And so I want to show you how you can build a student-centric language for delivering this information. But the first thing we need to do is we need to understand the difference between an action force and a reaction force, because most of our golfers don't. Now, the easiest way for me to understand this is you know, just through jumping. So when I go to jump, the first thing I do is you know, I get my body lower to the ground, and then I create an action force where I push down in the ground, okay? The, the force created by my calves, my quads, my glutes is pushing down. Now in turn, the ground reaction force is pushing back up, okay? So there I've got an action and a reaction force. And we need to understand which one of these our student identifies with. So I'm gonna show you how I go about and do that while I'm coaching with my 3D motion plate. And the first thing I think also is just to make sure we're not confusing force with pressure. Now I've got a pressure plate that sits on top of a force plate and the pressure is showing me force spread across an area, okay? And what that means is that if I, you know, just apply a certain amount of force down here with my entire foot, and from this I then maintain constant force, but I reduce the amount of my foot that's touching the ground, my force hasn't changed, but my pressure has gone up. And I think you better understand that if you're gonna be coaching with these terms. So now let's take a look at what I think is the easiest one, vertical force. As I mentioned before, I push down, reaction force pushes up, that's how we jump, that's a real key determinant of club head speed. But how do we talk to our golfers about it? Well, this one's easy. The first thing I do is I just tell them, okay, I, I need you to jump. Everyone knows how to jump, they're gonna jump. And then I ask them, okay, so did, did you feel like you pushed down into the ground or did you feel like you jumped up off it? And it doesn't matter what they say. There is no right or wrong answer, but whatever they say, that's how I'm gonna guide my language. So if one golfer says they push down into the ground, I know I'm gonna start talking to them about action forces. If another one says, oh, well, I just focus on uh, going up off the ground, I'm gonna focus on reaction forces. So that's one of the three components of force that we get from our 3D motion plate. The next one is our horizontal. Now this one I really feel is important for both quality and consistent contact, okay? So, you know, as obviously we, you know, we see things shift into the trail foot on the backswing, and then they, you know, shift back forward to the lead foot on the downswing. Now, I like to take my player, I like to get them to load at the top, and then what I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually gonna get them to jump towards the target, okay? Go on the trail foot, jump towards the target. And then again, I'm gonna ask them a simple question. Did you feel like you, uh, you know, push back towards my command station here? Or did you feel like you push yourself towards the target? We're creating the same force, but we're making sure we understand how the student understands it so we can deliver our information again in the way that they can receive it. Now the last one is torque, and this gets a little bit trickier. So if, if I was to pull this motion plate up out the ground, you're gonna see on each of the bottom four corners of it, there's a strain gauge, and that's what measures the amount of, of force being applied into each corner. And so torque is, is the amount of rotational force, or how, how hard is this plate trying to spin about this center point of the plate. So there's two separate components that combine to create torque force. The first one I'm gonna talk about is let's talk about this lead leg. So if I go to the top of the backswing and I go from here to impact, what happens? I can see that my lead hip gets farther away from the ball. The action force that the golfer applies for that is directed kind of towards the golf ball. That in turn, the reaction force drives the hip back away from the ball and causes this rotation. Trail foot, if I look at what happens from top of backswing is going to be to impact is that hip is going to get closer towards the ball. So in order to create that, the most efficient golfers in the world create an action force coming from their right heel, pushing backwards away from the ball 
and that drives the right hip closer towards the golf ball. So now how am I gonna test this? Well, step one is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through dominant leg testing. So I'm gonna have them hit balls here and I'm gonna see what is their dominant leg. From there, I'm gonna place them on their dominant leg and I'm gonna give them the appropriate cue. So for me, I'm left leg dominant. I'm gonna put myself on here. I know the action force is towards the ball. I know the reaction drives me away. All I'm gonna say is, hey, jump farther away from the ball. Boom, they just did it. I'm gonna say, okay, well, how'd you do that? Did you do it by pushing towards the ball or pushing away from the ball? And again, there's no right, there's no wrong answer, but it's gonna let me know how do I guide my language to get the maximum amount of return with the minimal amount of effort for every single student. So follow these simple tips to build a student-centric language when coaching with ground reaction forces and your players are gonna get better so much faster.